Hey YouTube, Mike here. Um, gonna do a little bit something a little bit different today. We're gonna uh, make some cashew brittle, some super hot cashew brittle. And um, I originally got the idea to do this from, of course, uh, T Mutter. First time I'd, I'd ever heard of it. He actually sent me some with some pods one day, and it was just awesome. It was unbelievable. I would have never thought to make anything like that hot, and it just it's just really good. And um, I tried making his recipe a few times, and it it turned out pretty good, but um, I got a different recipe that's very similar to his, but it's a little bit easier to make in my opinion, and um, you don't have to, the uh, texture is very easy to come up with, you don't have to be as exacting with it, and um, so I figured I'd just uh, do a video of me kind of showing you how I make it, and um, hopefully people will think it's so simple that they'll actually try it for themselves, because it's, it's very easy, so we'll... Uh, Cut this off and we'll get to the kitchen and we'll get started. Okay, here we are in the kitchen. And what you need is a medium saucepan, a candy thermometer, you want a, um, some caro syrup, about two to three tablespoons, um, two sticks of real butter, a cup of sugar, um, super hot powders, which in this batch I'm going to be using um, red brain strain powder, yellow brain strain powder, and brown super hot powder, and of course cashews. And what I got here is just regular old, it's a 14 ounce can of just regular old Walmart cashew halves and pieces. I just use the whole thing in there. And um, you also need a, a spoon, I'm just using a big old plastic spoon here. <clears throat> and that should be about it. So we'll get the butter. You, oh, you need to set your stove top to medium. I got mine on six. I don't know if you can see it there, but I just set it on six and you leave it there the whole time. So we'll add our two sticks of butter to our pan here. There we go. Kind of let that get good in there. Melt it up. I have to forgive the the poor camera. The cinematography here at the Pepper Chronicles is caveman at best. So if the camera is shaky and screwed up looking, that's just how it's going to be. But anyway, you get your butter going. Get it good and melty. And then it's about three quarters of the way melted. You can add our sugar. Add our sugar. Our one cup of sugar. Just regular old sugar. And then our caro syrup, about two tablespoons. And I just kind of eyeball it, man. I figure, eh, that's one or so. That's probably two, a little more for good measure. Yeah, I'll find a little more. That's about it. Get that in there. And then all you really got to do, of course you want to get it stirred up. And you have to use the candy thermometer because the only temperature you're really worried about getting to is 300 degrees. And it takes about uh, 20 minutes to get there. So you get this all stirred up. You don't have to worry about stirring constantly until it gets um, closer to 300, and you'll see this mix will definitely thicken up quite a bit. But we're just stirring this together. And of course with the candy thermometer, um, this is by no means a fancy one, but when you do use one, if you never used one before, uh, they usually clip to the pan, and uh, this bottom piece here, if I can get it in the camera, that little camera, okay, this bottom piece, you do not want it touching the bottom of your stove top. You want it basically to set a little bit above the bottom, ideally about halfway into your whatever you're cooking. So I've got it set maybe hmm, about a quarter inch or so above the bottom of the pan is where I have it set. I've got to make sure I can see that when it gets to 300. Okay. And we just stir this up a little bit. And um, we'll take a quick break and then I will uh, 
get to adding the peppers and uh, show you some more stuff. Okay, I think we're ready to start adding some super hot pepper to this. So I am going to use a half a tablespoon of each one of these, and this should make it pretty hot. So I don't know if I can do this without. When you know it, that doesn't fit in there. I'll have to go quarter, two quarter tablespoons of each one. Then. There's a quarter tablespoon of the red brain strain. And with this super hot powder, a little bit goes a long way. So I get a feeling that this is going to be some pretty hot brittle, but, you know, I'm kind of tired of making the mild stuff anyway, because you can make this mild where actually not so much crazy chili heads like a lot of people that watch these videos are, but normal people will actually enjoy it and still get the heat, but it won't blow their face off or anything. So there's a second quarter teaspoon of the yellow brain strain, and let's go to the brown. And the, uh, the powders, by the way, I got these from Cappy. That guy is just awesome. This is red brain, brain strain and yellow brain strain sauce. I'll put a link in his in the, in the description section of this video. So if anyone is wanting some super hot powder, you can get it from him. And his, his stuff is great. And this is the, some brown super hot powder. And there's one, and here's another one. And I got this brown super hot powder from uh, a guy named uh, Silver Surfer over at thehotpepper.com. And uh, you may be able to get some of that from him too if, if he has any left. I don't know. But we'll put this stuff away. And oh, I forgot to mention you do need a cookie sheet. What I've got is just a regular little, like a Teflon non-stick cookie sheet. And there's our mix, which I should probably be stirring. Oh, this is going to be some warm stuff, I can tell already. <laughs> it's going to be really hot. So, uh, Todd, you might be getting a little package in the mail, buddy. And you too, Sean. Because this is going to be some hot stuff, I'm sure you guys might like this. But anyways, um, it's going to be a while before we get to 300, so I think I will uh, cut the video and, uh, and we'll get back when we get to 300 and pull this off. Alright, I just thought I'd show you where we are here. We're a little bit over um, about 220 degrees or so, and you can see this is getting foamy and thickening up and I'm s you kind of got to stir this not really constantly but I kind of do just because you don't certainly don't want this to burn and I haven't had a I've made this several times now and I haven't had it burn yet but you definitely do want to keep stirring it and it thickens as it gets hotter so what's going to happen is once this gets to 300 degrees It'll get, uh, it'll be probably twice as thick as this is now. I don't know if you can get an idea how thick that is. But it'll be thicker. And what, all we're going to do is we're gonna just going to open our cashews up, dump them in, stir them up really good, put them on our cookie sheet, and then flatten it out to the, to the thickness you want it. And that's really all there is to it. So we'll, uh, I just wanted to show you that you do need to, oh, my cat's playing, but uh, you do need to uh, keep stirring this, and the foamy part, the bubbly stuff, that is normal, don't get, don't get freaked out thinking you did something wrong, it's really hard to screw this recipe up. So I will cut the video, and once we get close to 300, and we're about, we're right at, uh, we're about 250, so it'll be a little bit, be a few minutes, and uh, we'll get back once I get close to 300 and show you the rest of the process. Okay, we're getting close to 300 degrees here. 
and uh, very close. So I'll keep stirring this. I don't know if you can see how that's looking. Probably not. But we're stirring constantly. And we're looking at our thing, and it's right at 300. Yep, we're at 300. So we can turn this off, take our cashews, dump them in there. And you kind of got to work fast a little bit to stir this up. You can ditch the candy thermometer. And just stir this up vigorously, actually. Because it does start to kind of harden and it's tough to get those, nut, those cashews all stirred in well. But you can do it. It's more of a stirring and mashing process, really. Because when, the, when you pour those cashews in there, it gets really thick. Very thick. Feeling this is going to be pretty spicy stuff, pretty hot. All right, get this stirred up the best you can. Mix those cashews in there as good as you can. Part is part, right here. Let's get it dumped on the pan. There we go. Now we can just start to spread it out. You don't got to work super fast because it does stay pliable for a little while. And usually what I use is a, is a big plastic spoon, but it, I'm going to try. I got an old uh, wine bottle that I put some water in. We'll see how that works. A little non-stick action here. And that seems to be doing pretty well, actually. not sticking to the bottle. That's a good thing. Because I tried using the wooden spoon, and the wooden spoon, it just likes to stick to it, which makes it really difficult. You don't want to be doing that. But the, just the wine bottle with some water in it, I guess you don't need water, but this is very hot, so I figured the water would kind of insulate me from getting the crap burned out of my hands. And it's working. But you just get it, kind of work it out, get it to however thickness you want. And then once you've done this and you've got it to the desired thickness and shape you want, you can just let it sit and cool. But what I do is I'll slide the whole pan in the fridge and let it sit for about 20 minutes. And. Uh, so that's what we'll do. We'll come back after we've let it sit and cool in the fridge for 20 minutes and we'll see what we got. Coolness. Okay, we're back and we got our brittle out of the fridge. It was in there about 20 minutes. It's nice and cool to the touch. And um, this will be buttery. So take, it's a good idea to take a paper towel. Use gloved hands, of course, because there is super hot mix in this. And... Um, you know, you don't want to get this stuff on your hands and forget about it. It can lead to painful and embarrassing situations. Trust me. Anyway, what I like to do is i got a Tupperware container here. And I like to break it into big chunks first. And then and turn them over so I can take my paper towel and kind of wipe some of the butter off because it's very buttery on the bottom and just break it off into you know bite-sized chunks like this I suppose I should give it a taste huh see how hot it is let's try one of these pieces here a little end piece Hmm. Not hot at all at first. But right at the end it builds and gets you. It's actually really good.
anyway, this stuff is pretty good, and you can see about how thick I tried to make it. About like that. And uh, just break it up. So anyway, this is really easy to make. And um, Todd and Sean, you guys just let me know. Send me a message or comment, and I'll send you guys some of this. No problem, because... It's pretty good. Anyways, I'm going to end the video, continue doing this, and um, y'all take care. If you have any questions, just uh, just let me know in a comment or a personal message. We'll see you.